Welcome back, WNST, Towson from Baltimore and Baltimore Positive. You know, I think all these people I have in my life, uh, this guy's Mr. Positivity. He's over Coons Ford Security Boulevard. He'll be bringing his unique brand of sports, music, and fishing uh, on Thursday here from 3 to 5 on the Dennis Colazzo Show. You can also hear it on Sunday mornings here on AM 1570 as well. You know, I'd love to talk sports with you. We could talk about protests. We could talk about elections. We could talk about all this stuff. But the most important thing is, did you fish this week, right? Yeah, absolutely. I love getting out on the lakes and uh, you meet a lot of great people. And great for the mind, great exercise when you when you go around a 30-acre lake a couple of times. And uh, look, it's a lot of fun. Very therapeutic, right? People do different things for therapy and uh, and you know I'm a very competitive person, but not when I fish it. I just really enjoy it. Even if I catch nothing, that's true. Uh, I'm catching good vibrations, uh, sunshine. I'm seeing beavers and all kind of different birds and wildlife, wildlife and baby turtles. So it's all really good stuff. Baby turtles, really? Hey, baby turtles. I got a story for you. You want a Baltimore positive? I don't know if I've told you this. Um, nah, nah, I don't think I told you last week. Maybe I did. My wife and I. One of the nights last week when it was going to rain is before it got warm. We were going to go, we were looking for something to do, anything to do, right? We we're just a little stir crazy. And we thought, okay, let's go over. My, my friend uh, at Verde Pizza over at uh, Ed Bosco, right over at Patterson Park, right down the street from the uh, Ukrainian temple, you know, Eastern yeah. Avenue, right at Patterson right. Park. You yeah. know what I'm talking about. So sure. we, we, we go over and get a pizza, and we, we went into the park, and we took the pizza apart, and we literally just sat in the park, and, and you know, he didn't cut the pizza, and we didn't bring a knife, right? And we had a, a libation. Let's just say we, we needed to have a refreshment with this that we provide, and we sat on a park bench. Dennis, it was unbelievable. We we saw um, uh, Latino families playing soccer with their kids, social distancing. We saw people walking their dogs everywhere. We saw children out to play. But here's the thing. We got done to pizza, and my wife's like, let's go for a walk in the park. And I'm like, all right, I'll go for a walk in the park with you. And, and she said, you ever walk through Patterson Park? I said, well, and I've ice skated over there, and I know the living classrooms is over there. And then I showed her, like, the field up toward Patterson um, High School on the other side of, uh, was it Linwood, whatever the road is there. And I said, that's the field where I won uh, a, 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 a pitch hit and run. Tom McCann, right up on Eastern Avenue in Highland Town. When I was oh, yeah. nine years old, I won 1977. I had the plaque. Uh, with the Major League Baseball logo, I won the Highland Town pitch hit and run, and I won on that field. And she's like, well, what's over here? And I'm like, well, the pagoda's over there. I don't really know what this is. She's, well, there's a bunch of trees over there. Let's walk over there. And I'm like, all right. I had a pizza. I had a refreshment. I'm holding hands with my wife. It's a nice night. We're out in the park, Patterson Park, and city I love in a place I've never been. Dennis, there is a beautiful pond. And you don't have to walk far. Like, if you walk from the, the, the temple, it's sort of between the temple and the pagoda. It's so, so that makes it on the west side of the park. It's on the uh, southwest side of the park. All right? Okay. So by Patterson Park and Eastern, say, okay? And okay. you walk, you know, a couple hundred paces, and there's this giant, like, pond. And, and in it, we saw turtles, fish. Really? That we saw the most beautiful bird that looked like an Oriole bird, but somebody told me it was an orange winged or yellow winged blackbird, I think. But it had orange okay. on it. I put it up. Squirrels everywhere. Squirrels that are, that are family friendly. They come up to you. They think, you're a human. You're going to feed me. You're not going to hurt me. So nice. we, we walked around. There were all sorts of birds, all sorts of flora and fauna, all sorts of people on bikes. And I thought, you know what? This is great because you had told me about your stock pond and private land and Patapsco and all that. And I told my wife on the walk, I'm like, hey, Dennis says he's got like this place to take you. But now my wife's discovered Patterson Park. She got in there and you know what she said? She said, this is like Central Park. This is awesome. Baltimore is really? awesome. Huh. And I thought, yeah, we got to make Baltimore awesome. So that's why I'm telling you the story that I literally found this awesome place in the middle of the city, in the middle of a park I've been to a thousand times, I've been by 10,000 times, and it never stopped to just sort of like smell the roses a little bit, right? We got to do that sometimes in life, Dan. 
What, was anybody fishing that pond, or how big was that pond? What are the hey, numbers? hey, hey, it said right there, if you mess with anything, Jack Young's oh. going to put your ass in a pokey, all right? Oh, okay. And got I respect Jack. And I, you know, I will tell oh. you this, Dennis, and I want to give Jack a little love here. Can I do that? Am I allowed to give Jack some love? Sure. I have been driving around a city uh, in various ways, and, and listen, I see problems in the city. I see, I see problems. We all see problems. But I've also been looking for, like, good things. And I drove from uh, Dr. Steve's office uh, up at uh, uh, Perring Parkway, down, the, down Perring Parkway in the Alameda, and I drove Lock Raven because I stopped and got some delicious Jamaican food over at the Island Cuisine. And, um, and, and I drove both ways. I, I, I think our city's getting better. I think everybody here, COVID, coronavirus, protest. Uh, Dennis, I looked out my window about... Uh, I want to be accurate about the time because I don't want to be disrespectful. Sometime in the 8 o'clock hour on Tuesday night, riots going on everywhere, you know, protest at the White House, protest in the city. Tuesday was kind of a quiet day. And I looked in and I heard people chanting out my window. And I looked in, I got my binoculars, which I don't do much of. I'm not like a voyeur in that way. We have binoculars, but I don't use them much. And I looked in and I saw a whole pack of folks coming. And most of them were African American. I looked down. I focused in. They're wearing black because most people are wearing black through the city when they're protesting. I looked down. It was about three hundred people, Dennis, and they were all shapes and sizes. And there were little boys and little girls, six years old, eight years old, holding hands with their parents, walking with grandparents, aunts, uncles, people's on, on bikes, masks on 90 percent of the people. Everybody social distancing. And I'm thinking to myself, it brought a tear to my eye, Den. I mean, I, you know, I mean, like this was a whole neighborhood or a church group. I don't know who it was. I don't know who led it, but they were walking through the harbor and they walked through and they had one police little blue light with them and they were just literally walking with signs through my city. And I thought, you know what? That's powerful. Yeah, very, very much so when you see that that kind of community uh, gathering and and involvement and that's what it's going to take. And that's for just one person at a time and um, that the small victories, right? You know, that sometimes we don't think we'll make a difference, but we do. And well, that's the whole point. If you don't, if you give up like that, I mean, it's just like little boys. Well, I'm not giving up on a city. I guess that's my point. You know what I mean? Like yeah, we go you, around and we can't. see nice things and uh, I'm in Patterson uh, Park and Patterson Park was can't. clean and it was safe and yeah. it was nice and oh, it was yeah. family friendly and sure. there were people everywhere and there were Frisbees and dogs and kids and strollers and dates and Tinder dates and people walking around and eating pizza. It was awesome, man. Yeah. Well, it's like a little boy with uh, walking on the beach. He found a bunch of starfish washed on the beach, and he was throwing them back one at a time. And the old man comes up and says, son, you know, you, you know there's too many out here dying. You, you'll never make a difference. You're wasting your time. So he picked up a starfish, threw it in the ocean. He said it made a difference to that one, right? So ah. that's my philosophy. You, you make a difference one piece at a time. It's like eating an elephant. The way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time, right? You just can't eat the whole thing in one sitting. So, but you got to start someplace. There you go. And it all starts for you over Coons Florida Security Boulevard. It starts here on Thursdays and making deals and keeping yeah. people safe and doing all that. Give me a little um, – I've been asking everybody this. I asked Leonard Raskin this. I'm asking all my clients, all my friends that I have on, and, and all of our guests, quite frankly. And we're doing a lot this week, Dennis, and I think you can you figure this is appropriate. We're doing a lot of conversations about race this week here at Baltimore Positive with Reverend Al Hathaway. Uh, we're having Barry Williams on. Ben Jealous is joining us. Tim Tootin's joining us. Uh, all sorts of people uh, in all walks of life. We have a journalist this week talking about all of this stuff. Give me something for 12 weeks of COVID, and now we have protests. Give me something you've learned, other than you love fishing, <laughs> again. Well, well, what have you learned from the beginning of this? Where are we 12 weeks into this? Well, you know, as it relates to race, you know, I, I always say that, you know, we as people, we see what we're looking for, and it, it, we see examples of that, of that every single day, right? So if, if you're looking for for bad things, that's what's going to color your, your world, and that's what, that's going to shape your world and how you look at things. If you're looking for good things, again, that's what you will see. And, and you can change people's uh, outlook and how they view life through their own prism. That's the hardest thing to do is to get them to see it from someone else's perspective. That's why, you know, I always look to understand versus to be understood. I want to understand what the other person's looking at, you know, because... There's also the old adage, my experience, my truth, right? So what, what we experience as people, that's our truth. If somebody meets me and, and they have a bad experience with me, then I'm a bad person because that's based on their experience. Where 
And they might be surprised when they meet other people and say, hey, Dennis is a great guy. Well, that wasn't my experience with him. Um, and I think this holds true. As we see all the protests and you see the sides and the rhetoric and the media, and it, it gets to be maddening. And I tell you what, I saw a quote, um, and I think it was Ice-T who said it about the Democrats and the Republicans. He said, you know, it's the same bird with different wings, right? But there's, those wings are still attached to that same bird. And I thought that was very telling because if people want to see change and real change, you, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again, keep electing the same people over and over again and expecting a different result, Mr. So I think, that's, to me, that was one of the most telling things that I saw uh, the last 12 weeks. Well, I, you know, I'm hoping we can all pull this thing together. I'm hoping, uh, you know, that we can play football. I've... <laughs> I don't want to say I've given up on baseball, but but when it comes to baseball and where I am right now, and, and I'm going to talk to Luke about this a little later on in the week. I gave Luke a little oxygen. I'm just hoping Luke gets to go down to the beach with his family. He loves to do on the 4th of July in the summers because you know, he misses baseball very much. You know, I miss concerts. I miss fun. I said to my wife, I would sell my soul to just walk up the street and sit at the Indian buffet that I love so much. You know what I mean? Just for lunch, yeah. just to just to do that. And, and I feel like I'm never going to be able to do that again. Buffets are like one of the things that like, if you love buffets, we're going to be changing that up. I see that every time I go to the, to the store. But, uh, you know, just little things. But baseball is one of those things, like even if it came back this summer, the owner of the team doesn't want to play this year because they're going to lose more than they're going to make. They're going to lose less money by not opening. And I think there's eight of those owners in baseball that feel that way. Um, I am i don't hear much out of that other than consternation about money, which is all I've heard since 1974. Quite frankly, it's one of the reasons you're not as interested as you should be being the sports guy. You are East Baltimore, all of that. You know, your business, the things you do. Um the baseball team has really, really screwed this up, and and being where they are right now in the in COVID with a white sport in a, in a, in a, a city that doesn't want to come downtown in 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 last place with nothing to recommend them with guys who are now tied to the biggest cheating scandal of the century, uh, you know, in sports running the place, they want to turtle up and stay quiet. The, the problem for me, Dennis, and you know, this is where I'm going to come out swinging with both hands is that next year's the last year on a 30-year lease. And I don't know that there could be a worse time, right, for the city or the state to be talking about re-upping a baseball team. Now, that being said, I don't know who would want them, where they would go, what would happen. But it is a very, very um, um, less than permanent situation right now for the Orioles, even though the stadium's beautiful in regard to ownership and everything. And, and, and I really am concerned about that. I really am. I'm concerned in being a city that lost our football team, as you know, when we were kids and you and I fought back to bring that back. I don't know what happens because so much, so much of downtown, and you know this, Dennis. I mean, you were a kid, I was a kid. So much of downtown, downtown, its success, its energy, its moya was built around the baseball team. I mean, it really was the glue that put this thing together in the 90s and made this, made the city really come back to life in the way that it once was before the riots in 68. Well, Nestor, they're, they're not going to find a lot of sympathy uh, with a nation staring down unemployment numbers that are going to approach 40 million people, right? They're not going to be too sympathetic about millionaires, the owners, the players who, who just don't want to do this because it's not enough money for them. For me personally, you know, there's a beautiful picture uh, at, at WNSP at the studio taking the Memorial Stadium uh, from the aerial view, and there's a guy right there with, you know, he's balding, he's got a newspaper in his hand, he's got the plaid pants, and he's behind home plate. It reminds me of my father every time I see that, and it takes me back to a great time where my dad and I used to go to Oriole games. He loved baseball, uh, unlike me, but I used to go with him because, you know, especially when he got older, he didn't drive, I would take him to games. And so for me, it was a real thing. It was, it was it's just great memories. And for us to, to stare down not having it at some point, I think it's, it's terrible. And right now they have a chance to, to really uh, put the nation's eyes on them. And, and they're not going to do it, which is the most incredible thing. Well, I mean, you want to bring I've people back downtown? You want to help the hotel I'm attached to? You want to help the restaurant that went into Reggie's, this poor guy that poured his life into a restaurant down the street? That, I, 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 you know, 
I'm revolted about all of it. And and, and some yeah. of it is self-inflicted and some of it is world-inflicted and some of it is natural causes, cause majeure, right? Like all of it. But uh, the only way to get out of this is leadership, right? I mean, literally, the, the reason Coons Ford Security Boulevard is still there and it's awesome is because people like you have made it that way. And so that people like me would come and buy cars and make it that way, right? Like that, that you know, pride and ownership and that's, we all should have pride in Baltimore. We should. I mean, when I walk around and I see turtles and families and I walk the Harbor Line and see the beauty of the city and I walk and see places that used to be beautiful that aren't anymore, that could be again, I'm inspired by all that in the same way that, you know, Sig Dell would want to take a last place baseball team and try to win, right? Because they said it can't be done. You know, and, and they, they said Baltimore couldn't get a football team. I remember that. You and I spent long stretches of our of our adolescence believing we'd never get a team, right? And now we've had two parades down Pratt Street. No, look at Steve Bishotti and his family. You know, just gave a, a million dollars you know, back to the city. We don't see that from the Orioles. We don't see that commitment. We don't see the care, the love. We don't see them doing something for the greater good. And, you know, this is why I love the Ravens. This is why I, I, I see them taking holder. This is why I love supporting and buying all the gear. And, look, Steve Bouchard, is a good man. And I love the fact he gives back time and time again. Where are the Orioles in all of this? What have they given back? You know, every week we get together and I don't – I mean, there's a reason to talk about the baseball team. They kind of want us to not talk about them. You know what I mean? And I, I saw they put a tweet out. Did you see the tweet from John Angelos on, on – um, it was, it was on the Orioles. Well, you don't follow okay. the Orioles, so no. You no, didn't. Tell, tell me about it. No, I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to go find it because it was on Tuesday night because this is topical. I mean, we, they say we don't talk enough sports around here. I'm like, they, these people don't even want to play. You, you, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I mean, what if they don't want to play, why the hell do I want to watch it? Look, if they were playing, would, would we be talking about them? Of course we would. But you got to play. We're talking about, we're talking about them as to why they're not playing, why they're not coming together, why they're not doing – What's uh, for the greater good, not just for their, the, our community, but every community, uh, the, the league, right? Where's the love for the league? Where's the passion? And that also goes to the players, too. The greed is a, is a terrible word, and they're all very greedy. Nearly six decades ago, at another low point in our country's ongoing story, I can almost hear, you want me to read this in the Peter voice or the John voice? Because John wrote this, right? I mean, this is John's voice. It's the same thing he said five years ago when he sat in front of City Hall uh, on, you know, with an earpiece on CBS doing a national thing uh, when Dad disappeared and they, they played the game. But this is the organization that in the middle of all this, can you imagine on Tuesday night the Washington Nationals saying, yeah, I know there are riots over at the White House, but we got to get the game in tonight. Let's shut the game. Yeah. Don't come to the game tonight. We're going to just play baseball tonight while the city's on fire. Can you imagine that happening Monday night? I mean, it, it happened I, here. I witnessed I, it. I watched it with my own eyes. Did, did you see the picture of Lamar Jackson in an in a Orioles uniform? I with did. A, with a, with a, and that is, you know what? That was a wonderful, wonderful look. Why not play on that? Why not capitalize on that? But then again, this is the same organization that dishonored the Ravens uh, in 2012 when they won a Super Bowl by not allowing them to open up their season, you know, at, at Camden Yards in that area, right? They had to play the game on the road against the Broncos. By the that way, was a disgrace. I bought that a disgrace. It's exactly what I called it. I brought that up with Dan Rodericks last week. We had Dan on. We did an hour with Dan, and I was kidding Dan, you know, because Dan was on YPR, and I give him a hard time about me being a Dundalk guy, and you know, he's not really an uptown guy. He's an out of towner who's made his life for fifty years. But I said to him, "Yeah, I'm not erudite enough to have on YPR," and I said that sort of flippantly, kidding around with him, because I, I mean, Dan was like a, a big brother, a mentor to me, you know. And, um, and, and I thought, you know what? I only went on his show one time in my life, and I remember it. I was at the Cherry Creek Mall in Denver, Colorado. It was 100 degrees that day, and I was, my wife went shopping in the mall to get out of the heat, and I sat in the car in the rental truck we had, right? I hope it was a Ford for, for your... <laughs> and I sat in the car, and I did radio with him, and I'm thinking, was I too angry, Dan? Was I ang I was probably really angry that day. And I think I began it with, Dan, I'm sitting in a garage in Cherry Creek, Colorado. I should be at the Inner Harbor right now with Keith freaking Urban and his wife. 
And that's where I should be. And there should be 300,000 people in our city. And Cheesecake Factory should be full. And Amici should be full. And Roos Chris should be full. And the city should be full. But no. You had to play baseball yeah. today. Yep. And, and and I never lost sight of that. Kevin Cowherd wrote a book about what a great thing it was that they played a game for nobody. Now, Tuesday night, nearly six decades ago, at another low point in our country's ongoing struggle to understand and rectify the racial injustice of our fellow Americans have endured since the inception of our nation. You know, like, they, they put a tweet out on June 2nd, 2020, and all I did was said. You put a baseball game out in in May of 2015. You're not on the moral ground to take the high ground of we stand in solidarity with the people that took the knee. You, you know, like I, 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 I don't. I, I'm offended by that. To you, you said it. You used the word disgrace. I, you know, I, I, I agree with all of that, and it's even more disgraceful to me to be hypocritical when you don't stand out in front of what you say. You know, I mean, that, 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 that's it. You want to play the game, play the game. Make the money, get the game in. You can't come back five years later and gaslight me. I'm not going to let you. No, Al, Al Bumry was here yesterday. I, I love Al for the right reasons. He, here's a, a four-year Vietnam veteran, right, who was just shaking his head, didn't even want to talk about the state of the game. He was disgusted by the, by the turn of events and, and how the owners and the players can't come together for the greater good. Here's a guy who served the country, came back. During his peak, right, he was a young man, came back and became a Hall of Fame Oriole. Still involved in the community, still goes out, talks to kids all the time, right? He's all the things that are good about baseball and about humanity. He's a great ambassador. And you know what? Right now, what does he have to talk about? Well, and I, you know, I think for anyone, you talk about ambassadors, right? And I thought this way all along, and I think I even brought up with you, I had a conversation with Cal Ripken 15 years ago about the Orioles being the Expos and stuff. Can you imagine an Orioles season where nobody cares whether they play or not? Like, that's, ne- that's never happened before. I live two blocks away. There, you know, it would be a sign of life for America, for our economy, for our city, for every business, for every mother's that needs to sell beer and Dave Rather and these human beings that have invested their lives in this city so that they could milk hundreds of millions of dollars off the television campaign and and feel the last place baseball team. I, 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 you know, I'll leave it at that then. And we'll, I'll leave it on a high note that Lamar Jackson looked great in a throwback Jim Palmer, uh, you know, orange 1976 day glow day game business person special. Yeah. No, it was wonderful. And and here's my final thought, Nestor. How many, how many millions of dollars does a person need? You can't take it with you, right? So if you're blessed enough to be able to generate that kind of income because you have got gifted talents or whatever, or you, you, know, you, you paid a price when you were younger and you're smart and you have a law degree or you can hit a ball or you can throw a ball real fast, you know, when you're blessed like that, what, what is, what's the adage to much is given, much is also expected? Where is the give back, right? Again, how many millions of dollars can these guys uh, make in a lifetime? And, and you can't take it with you. And you know whose money they're fighting over right now? Ours. Yeah. They're fighting over my cable TV Our bill money. today. The yeah. working man's money, right? So let's talk about the working man and, and where they fit in this whole thing. So that's why it's hard for these guys to, to gain sympathy. And right now, I mean, they're, they're, they're losing, they're, they're devaluing their own brand. They're, they're shooting themselves in their own foot, right? Well, so, I thought that when they, they rolled the game out five years ago and, you know, had these people yelling at me. I mean, at the top of their lungs, and, and, you know, that this is the right thing to do. And I'm like, for who? For yeah. the city? For right. the businesses right. in the city? You know, right. you, you know it says now, Baltimore, you know, on the front of the jersey. Honor that. Honor that. Lift right. your protect city. The shield. Protect, look, protect the shield at all, at all costs. You know, Coons, we have 17 stores. I care about them just as much as I care about my own store. If I see something that's not kosher, that doesn't fit our brand, I'm the first one to call somebody to listen. That's not cool. We don't do business that way. We don't behave that way. We don't need to, and here's why. And if you do it again, it's going to be a very bad day for you because we don't allow that, right? We disallow that. Not that I won't hold your ground, but, you know, you got to stand for something, Nestor. You know, what's the old adage? If you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything? Well, you can't do that as, as, a, as a human being, and particularly as an American. This is the greatest country in the world, and right now we're creating images for the rest of the world that aren't good. Right, and the people don't get that. 
I get that, you get that, we get that, and I appreciate you, and I appreciate everything you're doing over Coons. For tell everybody what you're doing, and, and, and tell them how you can sell them a car, and love them up, and service their car, and did they, did just give, give me the whole run. They give me the elevator speech for Coons Ford Security Below. I don't let you do that you much. Know, well, you know, I appreciate it. Well, well, you know, again, I manage backwards. You know, I work for my employees, and, and we all work for our customers, so that's the main thing. We, we, we make sure that we're safe, first of all, that we're uh, complying with all the COVID-19 measures and then same thing with our customers we have masks everywhere we disinfect everything and we're a voluminous vibrant place in fact uh if, if you co- would come to our store you'd never know anything was different except the fact that we're wearing masks and gloves so we're very fortunate and very blessed we get a lot of repeat and referral business but uh, it's all about culture right so and and again that's for every move that i make it's for the greater good of my community it's never for the benefit of the, of the individual it's always for the benefit of all of us and that's mean our employees and our customers. If it's not good for our employees, if it's not for good for our customers, we just don't do it. Well, that's so how you're not going to be there next week or next month or next year if you're not doing all of those things. Literally, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You got to care. You got to care. And again, you know, p- people don't know, don't care how much you know. They, 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 what they want to know is how much you care. And you don't tell them. You show them. Right? It's by your acts. And that's why you know sometimes you'll see our, our guys and myself included just sweeping the lot, just taking just taking the trash off off the ground and. Whether it's Patterson Park, or there's, you know, Gwen Oak, Windsor Mill, you know, Essex, Dunlop, Little River, whatever the area is, people take pride, man. Take pride the way you look. It's the old broken window theory, right? So you broke a window, fix it. Don't let that broken window linger. If you have graffiti on the wall, take it down. You know, you know wash it, uh, wipe it away. That, that's it's all about culture. That's what we do. Well, that's what we're going to be doing around here, and I know you're going to be here Thursday from 3 until 5, again on Sunday, talking about the world, sports, fishing, um, MMA, and uh, w- w- golf, and what else is going on? Is it MMA, golf, NASCAR, Korean baseball? Is there anything else that, that is happening? I'm trying to think. That, that, that's about it, but you know what? The nice thing is, you know, we get to figure some things out. When, when things are taken away, when doors are closed, uh, other doors open, not just in the sporting world, but also in life. So it's, it's all a matter of perspective. And you mentioned if you have an optimistic uh, outlook, you figure it out. You find ways. Well, you said to me, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. I want you to remember that the next time we get together. <laughs> you got it. You, you got it. Dennis Galazos, he'll be here on Thursday. I'll be with him on Thursday. He'll be back with me next week. And you can find him at Coons Ford of Security Boulevard. Of course, our WNST tech service brought to you by Coons Ford of Security Boulevard. Uh, any uh, breaking news, including uh, the loss of the great, great Wes Unseld. And I haven't talked enough about that. Um, I'll be talking about that more, though, because I I know a lot of people that knew Wes. uh, I will be bringing them on at various points to to discuss Wes. Wes was always nice to me. Um, And, of course, Wes lived right in the shadow of Coons Ford Security Boulevard on the west side of town uh, over to Catonsville Woodlawn area. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, Wes was always good with me. Last time I saw Wes, I had a microphone in my hand uh, on the floor at the Baltimore Civic Center, the Royal Farms Arena, for the... Wizards, New Orleans, Pelicans uh, preseason tussle a couple of years ago. And uh, I interviewed him on the big screen. I said to my wife, I got a picture of me and Wes that night. And I, I think I took a picture with him. I just can't find it. But uh, that would be the only picture I have of Wes. My dad loved Wes. I loved Wes in the early 70s. Beating up on Golden State and Rick Barry and beating up on the Seattle Supersonics. Gus, the whole deal. The Big E, love it. Dave Bing, look that one up. <laughs> Nasty at WNST.net. Stay calm, always local, and always Baltimore positive.